Hi everyone, back again with another math lesson. Today's math lesson is chapter 11, lesson 10, converting metric units of length. Uh, if you recall earlier in the chapter, we were converting customary units of length, so now we're just doing the same thing with metric units of length, although I think you'll find this to be a bit simpler in the metric system because it's a base 10 system, so we are either going to be multiplying or dividing by powers of 10 each time we do a conversion today. Uh, before I get into the conversions and how to do them though, I'd wanna talk a little bit about the, the metric units of length and give you an idea of what exactly they represent. So we're gonna start here with a millimeter and to get an idea of a millimeter, you can think about the thickness of a dime, a pretty small you know, measurement. Uh, bump that up to a centimeter and a centimeter is about the width of a pinky finger. And then we get even bigger from there and we talk about a meter. So typically about the height of a doorknob off the floor. So that's roughly about a meter. Um, we've seen meter sticks in the classroom. So it's a little bit longer than a yard. So a little bit longer than three feet. So that's one meter. And then a kilometer, a much bigger measurement talking about about six city blocks. I know we don't necessarily live in a city. Some of you might do some running though, and maybe you've done a five kilometer race. Well, five kilometer race would be five of these measurements right here. So uh, to put that in perspective, if you have an idea of the meter and the meter stick, if you lay down a thousand meter sticks one after the other, you would have a kilometer, okay? So when it comes to doing our conversions, like I said, I just wanted to give you an idea of what these measurements actually represent. So some of these prefixes uh, you've seen before and you've used before and others maybe aren't quite as familiar to you, but we're going to use something called the step method whenever we do our conversions. Uh, and right in the middle of the steps here, we have what are called our base units. And the base units would be grams, liters, meters. Today, since we're talking about metric units of length, we're going to focus on the meters. So if I put deca in front of meters, I have something called a decameter, a hectometer. Those are two ones you probably haven't heard before. And quite honestly, we're not gonna use all that much, but we did talk about a kilometer or a kilometer. That is the prefix kilo in front of the word meter. And you can see if we put those two together, we have a kilometer or a kilometer. And then if we go down the uh, steps this direction, we have small, smaller units of measurement. We have a decimeter we have a centimeter, and we have a millimeter. So the way we'll use this step is, I first wanna talk about uh, what the prefixes mean. So the prefix kilo, that means 1,000. So what that means is if I get 1,000 meters together, I have a kilometer or a kilometer. Hecto means 100. So if I get 100 meters together, I have a hectometer. Deca means 10. So if I get 10 meters together, I have a decameter. And then we have our base unit, which is in this case meters, since we're talking about length. But then if we go the other direction, again, down the steps, we get smaller and smaller as we go. And a decimeter is one tenth of a meter. So if you take a meter stick and cut it into 10 equal portions, you would have a Take, take a look at one of those equal portions, you would have a decimeter, it's one-tenth of a meter. A centa, century means 100 years, so centimeter is one-hundredth of a meter. So if you take a meter stick, cut it into 100 equal pieces, you would have a centimeter. And then finally, milla, uh, a millennium has a thousand years in it, so miller refers to thousand, or in this case, it refers to one thousandth, very small number. If you take that same meter stick, cut it into a thousand equal pieces, one of those pieces would be a millimeter, a very tiny unit of measurement. So the way we'll use this step is anytime we're going up this direction, okay, so if we're starting down here, say we're starting centimeters and we want to convert those into kilometers or kilometers, and we go up the steps, we're going to take whatever number we start with, and we are going to divide it by 10 for every step we go up this direction. 
And if we start with something big and we go down this direction, for every step we go down, we are going to multiply by 10. So if we go up the steps, for every step we go up, we're going to divide by 10. And if we go down the steps, for every step we go down, we are going to multiply by 10. Now, right now, that might not make too much sense to you. But as always, once we do a couple of uh, examples with you, hopefully they'll become clearer and clearer. But again, we're either going to be multiplying or dividing by some power of 10. If you go up three steps, we would divide by three tens would be 10 times 10 times 10 is 1,000. We would divide by 1,000. If we go down the steps, we would multiply. If we go down three steps, we would multiply by 1,000. So let's see what that looks like and do a, a few cool. So we're going to start off with this 7 and 3 tenths meters. We want to see how many centimeters that we use. So I'm going to start right here with meters because that's where I'm starting with. And I want to go to centimeters, so I'm going to go down one, two steps to get to centimeters. So if I go down two, remember when we go down, we're multiplying by 10 for every step. So we went down two steps, so 10 times 10, we're going to multiply by 100. So we're going to take 7 and 3 tenths and multiply it by 100. Now here's, if you remember what we, we did earlier in the year when we multiplied by powers of 10, we don't have to stack these numbers on top of each other and multiply. We can just move this decimal, however many zeros there are in this factor. So we can see there's two zeros in this factor. So 7 and 3 tenths, if I move that decimal one, two times because there's two zeros here, I have an empty spot, fill it in with a zero, and I can see that 7 and 3 tenths meters equals 730 centimeters. Okay, So I multiply by 100 because I went down two steps. That's 10 times 10 is 100, so I multiply by 100, and I take 7 and 3 tenths and multiply by 100. I move the decimal point one, two times because there's two zeros in 100. I was left with an empty space, so I filled it in with a zero to give me 730 centimeters. Okay. I'm going to clear this off, and we're going to try another one. Grab my there we go. So now we're going to do five centimeters is how many meters so i'm going to start this time down here at centimeters because i have five centimeters i'm going to go to meters so that's up one two steps when i go up anytime i go up i'm dividing by 10 for every step that i go up in this case we went up two steps so 10 times 10 is 100 i'm going to divide by 100 so five centimeters, and I need to divide that by 100. So if I'm going to divide by 100, again, I don't need to set this up as a long division problem. You could, but if we remember what we learned earlier in the year with dividing by powers of 10, I can just move the decimal point around. So you might be saying, well, there is no decimal point. Well, if you remember, this being a whole number, when the decimal's not in sight, it's to the right. So there is a decimal point here. We just don't write it. It would be right here. Well, if I'm going to divide by 100, I want the number to get smaller, so I'm going to move the decimal to the left this time two times. So I move it one time, two times, and there's my new decimal point. I would fill in this empty spot with a zero. And then I would start the number with a zero as well to show that there's nothing in the ones place. So five centimeters would be equal to five hundredths of a meter. And if you think about it, that centimeter was fairly small, and now we're comparing it to an, a meter, and it's just going to be a little bit of a fraction of a meter. It's going to be, in this case, five hundredths of a meter. So we'll try one more.
And in this case, we're going to take, in this case, we're going to take 9,000 meters and we're going to convert that into kilometers or kilometers. So I'm going to start right here. My base unit in this case is where I'm starting. We're starting with 9,000 meters and we're going to go up one, two, three steps. And remember, anytime we're going up, we are dividing by 10 for every step that we go up. Well, we're going up three steps, so 10 times 10 times 10, that means we're going to have to divide by 1,000 this time. So in this case, we're going to take 9,000, and we're going to divide it by 1,000. Now you might be saying, okay, 9,000 divided by 1,000, that's easy to do, it equals nine, and that's true, but just to show you again how we would move the decimal, the number 9,000, it's a whole number. When the decimal's not in sight, it's to the right, so I'll put it in there. And so now I'm going to divide, so I'm gonna move the decimal to the left three times. So one, two, three, and there's my new decimal point. And again, mentally 9,000 divided by 1,000 equals nine. Moving the decimal point backwards three times gets the decimal point to there just beside the nine, and it equals nine as well. So our answer here is nine kilometers. So again, when you're using this step method, it's a matter of going up or down, dividing by 10 for every step, or multiplying by 10 for every step. You can literally just put a dot like I've been doing wherever you need to start and then move up or down wherever you need to go to get to whatever you're converting to and divide or multiply by that number. In your resources for this lesson, I have attached one of these steps that you could print off and you can use to do your conversions. And typically what I would do is write very lightly and do my conversions, maybe erase that one, go on to the next one, erase that one. Or if you wanna print out multiple copies, you can do that but please use the resources that I have for you for this lesson. And as always, if you have any questions at all, make sure you ask your questions. I'm available to help you in any way that I can. Okay, so good luck to you and uh, hope everything goes well. Take care.